Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 4 from the Jan 2009 PUA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions to the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so they start off by telling us that Lipset Enterprise is a manufacturer of concrete garden benches. For the year ending June 30th, 2008, the enterprise produced a thousand benches. The following information relates to the manufacturing operations for the period. Okay, so they start us off with the inventory at May 1st or 7th. So if the current year end is June 30th, 2008. Okay, I think they made a mistake here. Because if it was May 1st, 2007 was the start of the year, April 30th, 2008 should be the end. Okay, so... We'll just assume they meant July to July 1st, 2007 here, yeah, because May 1st, 07 to June 30th, 08 is 14 months. All right. Um, so <laughs> we'll, uh, again, we'll assume it's July 1st, 07. So open and stop for raw material and work in progress, 4,000, 10,000. Next, we have inventory at June 30th, 2008. All right. Um, that's a closing stock for raw material, 3,200. Closing stock for work in progress, 3,400. All right. Then we have some other items down here. We have purchases of raw material, returns outwards of raw material because we have no information so far regarding finished goods. So we could safely assume the returns outwards has to do with raw materials. Carriage on raw material and factory wages. So all of these would be part of your prime cost since we obviously are doing a manufacturing account, right? Then we have a few other items down here. Let's just highlight the rest of them, right? So salary of factory manager, direct expenses, okay, factory power, general factory expenses, annual depreciation on plant and machinery, and admin and selling. So that will not go in the manufacturing account. That will go in the income statement if we are doing one. Remember, the manufacturing account records only manufacturing or production costs. Okay. Now, the first thing we are required to do in Part A is prepare Lipset Enterprises manufacturing account for the year ended June 30th, 2008, showing clearly the following items. Cost of material available for use, cost of material consumed, prime cost, factory overheads, cost of production, all of that for 14 months. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to start off by properly heading up our statement. Name of the entity, Lipset Enterprises. Name of the statement or what we're doing, manufacturing account and the period to which it applies. FYE stands for for the year ended, 30th June 2008. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is the cost of raw materials used. So we're going to start with the, hold on, so before we are we get into this, right? Just a plug for my, my video on how to do manufacturing accounts from scratch. I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check that out. And I, I break it down real simply and build it back up piece by piece, right? So I don't give you a whole format to memorize all at once. I break it down into pieces, right? So if you find you're having trouble with manufacturing accounts, it's too much to remember, check out that video. I'm, I'm very sure you're going you're gonna to learn from it and you're not going to regret it. Okay. So we're going to start off again with the cost of raw materials used, which means we need the opening stock of raw materials of $4,000. So we're going to put that inside of there. Next, we need the purchases. So we have a few items down here, right? We have purchases of raw material, $150, returns out and carriage in. So we know it returns out, we subtract that and carriage in, we add that. So the purchases is $150, the carriage is $5,000. When you add those two together, you get $155 and we subtract the returns of $3,500 to get the net purchases of raw materials of 151 500 we're going to add that to the opening stock and that's going to give us the cost of raw materials available for use which again is something in question said to show to show explicitly the next thing we have to subtract is the closing stock so the closing stock of raw material was 3200 according to the question here so we're going to put that in and we're going to get when we subtract it we get the cost of raw material Use or cost of materials consumed, which again is something else. The question was specific about wanting you to show explicitly. Okay, next, what about direct labor? So we have factory wages. So factory wages is usually safely assumed to be direct labor, unless other information in the question paints a different picture or provides some more context, right? Uh, so we're going to have that. We're going to put that one in there. And, right, if I'm not mistaken, there was a direct expenses item. Yes, here it is of $10,000. So we're going to plug that in as well. And when we add all three of those items together, we get prime cost, which is something the question said to show specifically. Okay. So now we're going to take a look at the factory overhead. So if we go back to the list of information, we have the salary of factory manager, right? Uh, factory power, 
general factory expenses, and annual depreciation on plant and machinery. So let's plug in those things one at a time, right? So the salary of factory manager is 35,000, factory power was 8,400, general factory expenses was 12,000, and annual depreciation on plant and machinery is 50,000. So there was nothing else that would be classified as overhead. We're just going to add up those four items to get a subtotal for overheads. We're going to add that to the prime cost to give us the total, the current Pierce production cost. And we have to adjust for work in process. So we're going to take the opening balance, right, of $10,000. And then we're going to subtract the closing balance of $3,400. And we're going to have a net adjustment of $6,600. Now, you could actually put these two items in this column and just add and subtract going down, right? There's no one right way to do a manufacturing account. It's not a financial statement governed by international accounting standards, right? It is subject to... Um, different opinions and different formats. Anyhow, this is the usual one, so we'll stick with it for now. So now, we're simply going to add the adjustment for working process to the current period's production cost to get the cost of production or cost that was manufactured, right? And this, of course, was something else the uh, <laughs> question was specific about you showing. Okay, so that's part A. Let's take a look at part B. Okay, so part B asks us to calculate the production cost per bench. So to find that out, we need the total cost of production, which we just found, as 354, 300, and we have to divide that by the number of benches. Now, where will we find that information? Actually, that's in the first paragraph. Don't you remember? They said it right here. The enterprise produced a thousand benches. So all we have to do is divide that figure by a thousand, and we're going to get 354 dollars and 30 cents. Right now, part C is asking us to calculate the total revenue earned from the sale of the benches. Assuming Lipset Enterprise sells all the benches at $500 each. So that's relatively easy. To find total revenue, it's price by quantity. The number of benches, the quantity, multiplied by the selling price. So we know that the selling price was $500. They just told us that in Part C. And we also know we sold 1,000 benches. $500 by 1,000 is $500,000. Now, Part D is saying to us, calculate the profit made by Lipset Enterprise for the period for three months. Okay, so we are going to take the revenue from the benches of 500000 We are going to subtract the cost of making the benches, 354 300 And don't forget, we also had the admin and selling expenses of 48000 So we have to take that into consideration too. So when we do the arithmetic, we end up with our profit of 97700 and that's it for this question. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question four from the Jan 2009 PUA Paper 2. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe, and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some pretty useful PUA handouts. Anyway, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time. Bye.